Hi, I'm Jen and I want to welcome you to my channel. Today I'm going to show you basic video settings on a Sony a7 IV. But before I do that, be sure to subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss my next video. I have lots of tutorials about real estate photography and also the business side of it as well. Now let's jump in to the video. All right, so here I have the Ronin S by DJI. I'm switching from photo to video. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mount my camera on the switch plate and I'm gonna turn on the bottom power for the battery of the Ronin. Then I'm gonna turn it around over here and I'm gonna press the power button. You'll see the three lights match up. And I have it on mode two, which is pretty much the mode that I keep it on 90% of the time. So when I switch from photo to video, these are the steps that I do. I'm going to want to switch this from the camera icon to the video icon. I'm going to hit the right side of the circle button and I'm going to go to auto ISO. I'm going to change the f-stop from 9 down to 5.6. I'm going to change my shutter speed. I'm going to bump that up. Sorry about that. Two, one over 160. The sweet spot that I've kind of found is f5.6 and one over 160. Next step guys, you're gonna wanna change the setting on the lens from manual focus to autofocus. Uh, this is the lens that I primarily keep on my camera for both photo and video. It's the Sony 12 to 24 G f4. For photos, typically I keep it on 12 to 14 millimeters, but for video, I tend to keep it between 14 and 16, and sometimes all the way up to 24, depending on some detail shots. So you wanna play around with it until it fits the needs of the home that you're shooting. Now, because I have it on auto ISO, you'll want to make sure whatever you're filming looks right on the back of your screen. If it's looking too dark, the easiest way to fix that is to bump up your exposure. I usually do plus three, plus seven, plus one until it looks about right, especially if you're facing um, outdoors or the windows. So I have it here on plus 1.0 and this is looking pretty good to me. One thing you want to check is the autofocus. Make sure it's on continuous. Hit the function button and see right here we are on autofocus continuous. So when I press the shutter button here you can see all of these green brackets show up so we make sure everything is in focus throughout your video. As far as image quality goes I tend to keep the file format at 1080, 60 frames per second. It turns out perfectly fine, especially with this nice lens, comes out beautifully. So unless you really prefer to shoot in 4K, I just recommend 1080p, 60 frames per second. All right, now we're ready to go. I usually double tap this button in front, make sure the gimbal is nice and steady and level and we are ready to shoot. All right, so another thing I wanna to touch on is your video settings for outdoors. So inside we had it at f5.6 and around 160 or less for your shutter speed. So when you go outside, it's so important that you have everything properly exposed. You don't want things overexposed because it's a lot harder in post to fix that. So what I typically do myself outdoors is I bump up my f-stop to about f9, f11, 
And I also up my shutter speed to around 320, depending on the day. I'm here in sunny Florida, so it's typically really bright, really sunny. And I always watch that sky, watch those clouds and make sure that everything looks great through the viewfinder and in camera. Another thing, I use the 12 to 24 G on my Sony a7 IV, so I don't have the option to put an ND filter on that. And that, you guys, is just basically sunglasses for your lens. But if you do have another lens and do have that option, the ND filter is a great thing to grab and stick on that lens and that will help you greatly outdoors as well. So keep those things in mind, adjust things, take that extra minute or two while you're at the home, make sure everything looks right, and that'll prove to be easier in the long run, okay? Thanks again for watching this video. Be sure to like and post in the comments where you're from and what your favorite video settings are for real estate photography.